Watchman. The Watchman. The Watchman. Indeed, you are on to the Watchman radio program. And again, as I said, you are listening to Everlasting Life Radio. And we are broadcasting live from the United Kingdom. And today we have another very exciting program lined up for you. And uh, we'll be talking to a brother or to sit say from the uh, country of Africa, from Botswana to be exact. And uh, we had him on the program previously, um, sometime last year, a few times. And we are bringing him back today uh, through the leading of the spirit that, uh, you know, he has a lot of uh, very uh, important information that we need to know and hear. This is a man that has uh, been privileged to uh, visit heaven and hell quite a few times. He has been experienced an increase of uh, supernatural encounters in the realm of the spirit. And today we want to talk to him about some of this and to get and to learn something from this man. He has a wealth of information as he has visited and he has heard from the Lord on uh, numerous occasions. And so I think it is fitting for us to bring him on this program again to share some more with us. Um, so I want to connect uh, with him just to make sure that we are online here. Brother Otositse, are you with us? Hello, Brother Kiddis. I'm here and greetings in the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you hear me clearly? I can hear you clearly. Good. Okay. I just want to make sure that the connections are good. Perfect. So, uh, again, welcome to the program, brother. And it's a real pleasure to have you today. Thank you, sir. It's an honor to be here again on the program. Good. Okay, uh, brother Otositsi. We'll just get started because I know we have a lot to share in, in a very short time. Uh, for the benefit of, the, of our new listeners, uh, of course, you were here on this program sometime last year, but I know we have a lot of new listeners since then. Those who may not know who you are or know you, just give me again just a little background about yourself and your ministry for the benefit of those hearing us uh, for the first time or hearing you for the first time. Okay, um, my name is Brother Utisita Musi. I'm a young man of 24 years. I uh, graduated in university in the year 2012. And then I'm a leader of Blast Fairness Fellowship, which is in Botswana. It's a youth ministry. We are going around Botswana preaching the gospel uh, to churches, conferences, schools, and just many places. And we are going with this message that the Lord has given me, the message about the imminent rapture, about heaven and hell. And mm. also I'm an author of two books. The first book is already there in the web. It's called Revelations of Heaven, New Jerusalem, Paradise, Jesus, and Angels. If you can just Google it, you'll find it. That is the first book that I've written. And then there's another book that is coming, which is going to be about 200 pages, uh, Revelation of Heaven and Hell. Um, my series of visions that the Lord has given me about heaven and hell, I've put them in this book. And it's going to be a lot bigger than uh, the first one. And then also... We have a web ministry like in Facebook. Uh, we are sharing the word of God with many people, thousands of people around the world, from USA, from Europe, from Africa, from Australia. I'm posting some daily teachings of God's word, many posts and visions and revelations that the Lord gives me on a daily basis, prophecies about what is coming in this end times. I usually post it on the web. And some of the people, they take it, they make some videos, and they place it in YouTube. And also the last thing, I gave my life to Christ on the year 2010, and ever since then the Lord has given me uh, some visions and revelations about heaven and hell, about the rapture, about tribulation, and the end time. Then he, he commanded me to write these things and to share with people of the earth, particularly in Facebook and then throughout the web. And then some of them we can even print it and go around just to listen to a lot of people. Amen, amen. And I, I, I myself have been following uh, most of your posts, especially on, on Facebook, and they, uh, I can testify and say that they are truly a big blessing. 
and the information that you have received, the revelations that you have shared, and even the prophecies that you have given, they are all authentic. And I uh, just want the listeners to know that uh, you can find uh, Brother Otisiste on uh, on Facebook. You can join his uh, his group and you know follow him. And uh, I can guarantee that you will uh, be blessed by uh, his ministry and what he has to share. Okay, so um, Brother Otisiste, as I said, uh, I just want to hear some more about your recent visits and encounters in the realm of the spirit i want you to share with the listeners about some of your most recent visits and supernatural encounters i'm going to leave the floor open to you go ahead brother you want the front share uh my encounters jesus comes and takes me to heaven and assure me i'm sorry i share some revealing to me. So, there's a, there's a lot of revelation that the Lord has been giving me, especially this year, and the of year, uh, which I don't think I'm going to be able to share, but I'm just going to share a summary of this vision and revelation. Um, I noticed something that when the Lord took me to heaven, I first arrived in a place called Abraham's bosom, or I enter through most of my visitors when I get to I arrive in this place called Paradise. And what Paradise, this is a place where I trees and grass and flowers, nature, the mountains and hills. And on top of this mountain I see snow, a very white, extremely white snow. And then I saw slopes, I saw jungles, streams of water, ponds and seas. The topography just looks like the earth. And I asked the Lord about it, and the Lord told me that uh, the earth is the earth. Uh, brother, or to sister, sorry to cut so you there. You yes, uh, sorry to cut you, but it seems like the connection is real bad. Uh, it's uh, um, From my end, you, it's, uh, it's real chippy and uh, cutting in and out. Um, I don't know if it would be possible for you to probably go into a next room in your house or wherever you are where the connection might be a little better. Okay, is it still... Are you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Okay, go ahead now. Let's let's see if that, that is a little bit clear. Go ahead. Uh, Mr. Heaven, you are little uh, paradise and meet a lot of things or see a lot of things that looks like the S. I talked about the grass and the skins, flowers and horse and animals and pugs. But he made the S in the of heaven. Nobody will see it when we get to heaven. When I get it, that comes from everywhere. The light comes out of the ground, comes out of the flowers out of the soil, but primarily from the throne of God, which is like located in the east. And then also, when I walked in heaven, uh, like in my recent vision, as I was walking in heaven, I began to hear this incredible music, angelic music, pure heaven music, literally out of the ground. That time I didn't hear you know, but the sound, the sheep and the presence of God, they come from everywhere, from the ground, from the flowers, from the skies. So everywhere in every part of heaven, you'll always hear this pure heavenly music. And then also, what the Lord showed me, I saw in part of that that there's a lot of different colors. Like here on the earth, we know of uh, the major nine colors, but in heaven, there are many more colors that some I can't even describe them to you because I have not seen them on the earth. And when I'm in heaven, I feel the presence of God, I feel the joy of God, I feel the love of God like I've never ever experienced in my life. And that is why we need glorified bodies when we are there in heaven because the power and the love of God is just too much. You feel like you can't contain it. And then also, the heaven to me to heaven, uh, to the New Jerusalem, and we're standing uh, next to the wall of Jasper, that transparent wall. And then I noticed something about the pillagers there, there is a white 
shining part which is called the pedigree, and you just drown into it with the mess, and then you walk in the hallway. And you're walking the hallway, when you look and you arrive, when you look and you arrive, you see glass, and there's some smooth around a large stones. And as you are walking, you begin to see thousands and thousands of angels. And then you enter into the city. And then you arrive at the place where there's a big golden book, which is called uh, the Book of Life. And the angels can check your name, or you can see your name there, written in a healthy language. And also, uh, there's what is called this uh, three of them are not good gold, but they are pure, solid gold. But this gold is a transparent gold. And you look on the streets of gold, when you look down, you can see your mirror is in the in the and come in heaven. Because they share the equipment, the dressing, the toys, some of them they have gold, golden streets, golden equipment, and gold is just everywhere. And also, there are two kinds of homes that I saw in heaven. There are the mansions, and then there are the houses. Uh, as I was flying over heaven, I saw uh, uh, things that looked like houses, not mansions. And they were like made out of reddish, goldish material. And then the Lord made me know that those houses are for people who uh, did not take their salvation serious until the last minute when they repented on the deathbed. And also for sinners who were not born again, but when they were on the deathbed, they gave their life to Jesus, they were general repentance, and they were forgiven. And when they get to heaven, there's a kind of houses that I saw there for them. And on the other part of heaven also, I saw mansions, like some of them that are like built out of, of glass. You can almost see through them. And then some that are called castle mansions, and some called sky mansions. They just go up in the skyline of heaven, and you can see them from like every part of heaven. And then the, one, the other one that looks like palaces. And then I saw uh, in another part of the city where there are three mansions, mansions on trees. And the streets are just transparent. There's no litter. There's no anything between. There's nothing that defiles when I was there in heaven. And also there's what is called the country mansions and the chamber mansions. And all these mansions, they come in different varieties and types uh, according to your own individual preference as a believer. So I saw different kinds and different kinds of mansions. And the Lord showed me that these are for different people, different believers coming from the earth. Mm -hmm. And then also, uh, I noticed that there are not only mansions and houses in heaven, but there are other places that look like warehouses and buildings. And some of these buildings are for corporate worship, where the angels, they come in and they worship God. And then also when they think, when they want to come and worship God, they can just enter into one of those places and they worship God. And I saw also a large bridge that is golden from one part of heaven to the other. I didn't see people traveling on it, but I just saw the bridge as I was just uh, walking there in heaven. And also there's a sea of life, and then there's the river of life. And the river of life comes from underneath the throne of God. And when I look in the river of life, it is carrying water that is like, that is sparkled, it, like it glitters. And then Jesus was holding my, my right hand, we were walking on top of the, the river of life. And we didn't run, we were just walking on top of the earth. And I was just, there was this incredible building on the left. And the river passes in the middle of the city, and it goes out to paradise. And when it gets into paradise, it begins to uh, uh, become like multiple streams, going to different parts of paradise to distribute water. And then also, uh, like in my recent vision, visit to heaven, I mentioned me something. There was a part of one YouTube minute, so I saw children there. Uh, it's, the place is called Children's Paradise. I saw children, small ones, older ones, and then the children are from different parts of the earth, from Africa, from Australia, from Asia, and all the children, they were just having fun, playing. There was a large roller coaster. The children were screaming, enjoying uh, themselves in this. And the Lord made me know that this children that you are seeing, most of them are from uh, the earth. They were aborted, and some were from... So the, when they died, the angels were sent to the earth and they collected these baby spirits, their souls, and they brought them into the kingdom of God. And the Lord told me that, remember I said in my words, suffer not the children to come unto me, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the Lord said, anyone who has ever committed abortion, if they repent, live a holy life, become born again, when they die, they will go to heaven and they will raise their own children there in heaven. Amen. And also, uh, there is something that I think mean about transportation and communication. When we were there in heaven, I noticed that when I talked with the angels, 
I don't need to like open my mouth to verbal communication. I just I can read the the extreme or even thoughts that are audible. We communicate telepathically. We can read each other's thoughts, and there is no uh, communication is not and transportation. And it is something that we can move from one part of heaven to the other. We can fly like birds. We don't have a problem flying. Also, we can move on what is called thought travel. When you think about a certain place, and instantly you are there. You start seeing yourself traveling. And also, when we move in heaven, we don't do pedestrian walking, but we just like hover in the ground, and we move gracefully in the air by the Spirit of God. And then also, uh, recently, the Lord showed me the chariots of heaven that transport a lot of people from one part of heaven to the other. And this chariot on top of them, they are like made out of glass, but underneath, it's a solid thing your feet cannot go through. You cannot even see underneath the chariot. And the door is like on the left. And the thing start to move and accelerate on the streets of gold. And also it can move under the water. And also it can move in the sky and of heaven. And they move at a tremendous speed. A speed that is faster than the speed of light. And angels are driving this kind of chariot. And also um, there's a place called the Garden of God. In the Garden of God... Uh, there are different types of fruits. I saw the river of life passing, and then I saw fruits on either side. And then we, I was there with this angelic guide, and he told us to pick any fruit that we want. And the fruit, when we, we ate them, it was so delicious, juicy, just coming out of your mouth, and then the most sweetest thing you have ever tasted in your entire life. And the Lord told me that thirty million on the is enough food in heaven for all the angels, of, for all the saints, for eternity. There is not only food, there are different kinds of food that we don't know that we have never seen here. And the Lord has made them a surprise. When uh, the marriage of the Lamb, we are going to uh, feast on these things. Amen. And also, the the saints, um, somebody was asking me if I uh, seen the Old Testament saints and the New Testament when I was in heaven. When I was in, he- in heaven, I saw a lot of people. Um, there's a time I met Abraham, a time I met Prophet Elijah, Prophet Samuel, I met Joseph, and all these people, all these people from the Bible. Most of them, I saw them there in heaven, and in the New Testament, I saw Apostle Paul, I saw Peter, I saw James, I saw John. There was some time when the angel took me to heaven, and I saw Jesus on the throne, and I saw Apostle Paul there. I saw many people dressed in white, and there were children there, and there were also mature people. And the Lord showed me something that when a person dies on earth, when he was around maybe eight years, hundred years old, man, when he dies, he gets to heaven. There is like his age is reduced. He will look like the time when he was about 20 to age. And when you die as an infant, when you get to heaven, you grow. You go through angelic school. As you are growing, you are learning many things. The oracles of God, the knowledge of God is imparted to you, and you are growing. Actually, to this certain stage, then it's like you stop growing. So everybody in heaven, they all of them, they look beautiful. The angels and the saints, and also uh, about the angels. I know that a lot of people are fascinated about angelic ministry. They want to know about angels, how angels look like. When you are there in heaven, you see a lot of angels because angels are instructors, they are guides, they are giving information, they are teaching people, especially the guys who died on the earth and they didn't have any sufficient knowledge of God. So when I was in heaven, I saw Michael, I saw Gabriel, and I saw other angels. And then I noticed that there are eight classes and the ranks of angels. There are angels that are so that put on a white roof. Angels that put like shafts of light. And angels that are massive, very huge and tall. And recently as I was taken to heaven in paradise, I saw this angel that is just pure absolute light. And then he was telling of many short and he was just walking in the midst of paradise. But those angels, all of them that are busy, are doing a lot of things. Some of them, they come to the earth. Some of them, they are doing a lot of they in heaven. And then, as I want to just summarize or make, to brush over this thing, uh, the Lord has been taking me to his throne room, the throne room of the Lord Jesus. Uh, I remember recently, uh, after the Holy Spirit told me that he wants to tell me something, the Lord took me in a vision, 
and then I was taken to this throne room of the Lord Jesus. And that the walls are transparent and the floor is like made out of glass. When you look there in front of you, you see a golden platform. And the golden platform they say, throne seat that is pure solid gold. As I was there kneeling, I looked at the side. It was pure solid gold. And the Lord Jesus Christ was seated there. And when I saw him in the throne room, his robe was complete white. And I was like <laughs> there was emanating from him. And then also, I know that Jesus says, Shines like the sun, blessed like the sun, like the Bible says in the book of Revelation. But I noticed something also. He can make the surrounding glory to be suspended so that you can have a glimpse of his face. So he did something like that, and I was able to have a glimpse of his face. And I saw that the Lord Jesus Christ is a very, very handsome. And then he has this golden, brownish beard that goes in his eyes. And because his eyes are large, round, most beautiful eyes in the whole universe that is many colors. And then when I saw him that time, he uh, put on a golden crown with many gemstones, with uh, sapphires and diamonds, and was holding a golden scepter. And the Lord told me a message. He said, go and tell my people that I am coming. Not soon, but right away. And when I come only the same, only the holy ones will see me. And then also, um, the Lord showed me uh, the father, the father's throne. I said something the other in the other program. I said when you get to heaven, there are some throne rooms that the Lord can take you into. Maybe He wants to show you something. Maybe He wants to give you a personal interview. But it's a major throne room. It's called the, the throne room of the Father in the temple of God in the middle of the city, and it is high and lifted up. That's where you see cherubims and twenty-four elders and all, all those kinds of angels and the things that are written in the book of Revelation. So when I saw the throne room of the first, when I looked at the skylight, I saw a temple. The walls are transparent. And when you enter into the temple, the dense floor of the heaven is called the crystal sea. It's like a place that is just made out of glass. And then the platform, golden platform, and a large chain there. And you see someone sitting on the throne. And this person that is sitting on the throne, there's just massive white light. You see glory like you've never seen glory before. And also, I noticed something as I was coming to the throne room. There were lightnings and thundering that came out of the throne room. And there was different colors, golden colors, reddish colors, yellowish shades of white, just different varieties of colors. And all you can do is wow, 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 wow. And the colors are changing from time to time. So forever you are just amazed at the glory of God. And also the side of the Father's throne, the, the bright clouds. And uh, there are just, just incredible clouds that are here. And smoke is just coming, which is the, shine, the glory of God. And there's a big rainbow that shadows the throne of God. So these are just some of the things that the Lord has been revealing to me uh, in this, my, my recent encounters or my recent spiritual visions to heaven. Wow, wow, that's uh, that's very powerful, and uh, that's a lot of information for us to take in there. Uh, that's why I have uh, I will be putting this uh, program up on YouTube so that you can go back and take your time and listen to this information. Although the connection is uh, just a little bit bad, I'm sure that we can. Uh, make out what Brother Otho Sisse is, is saying here to us. Um, but to get to our next uh, question, uh, Brother, I just want you to tell me which regards, of course, I, I heard you mention that Jesus did tell you that he is coming not later, but now. Um, are there anything else uh, that you have seen or heard during any of your visit there regarding how close we are to the rapture? What can you tell us about how close are we really to the rapture? Uh, okay. Um, the rapture of the church is the major or the most important message from God now to the church. And that is the message that he emphasized more than any other message. Almost all the time when I get to heaven, the Lord talks to me about the rapture, how he will be coming quickly to come and take his bride and how we must prepare because uh, of us we take the rapture to be a light thing okay I'm born again uh, Jesus is coming back soon we don't really get to the rapture 
and I usually tell people, I say, we think uh, wait for the rapture, but we prepare for the rapture. So every day that we find ourselves here still on the earth, there's a mercy and the grace of God for us to prepare. Um, the beginning of the year in January, the year 2014, the Lord gave me a series of messages for the year 2014, what we should expect, going to be happening, and also about the rapture of the church. And the Lord said to me that this year, the year 2014, is the year when we as believers, we as the body of Christ, the bride, we must tighten our bells. We must lift our eyes because our redemption, our salvation draws nigh. We are not in 2013, we are not in 2012, we are not in 1990. We are in 2014 and we are close to the rapture than ever before. In fact, um, every day that we see ourselves here on the earth, is the mercy of God, the grace of God, for us to repent of our sins, for us to prepare more for the rapture, and for us to win the lost. The Lord told me that He is coming, and the Lord is not coming soon. The Lord says He is coming right away. That means any moment, any day, it is right for the rapture. But there's something that we need to be careful of. Um, we are not supposed to set the date of the rapture, because the Lord will not reveal that date to any man, not even to any angel. So the day of the rapture, we will not, he will not reveal to us or we will not know. But the Lord has revealed the season that we are now in the season. That means any moment, any day now, the rapture will take place. So in the message that the Lord gave me to, uh, gave to me about the year 2014, that's some second thing that he mentioned. There's a lot of uh, end time events that are going to happen that is going to show people now it is time, is the season where it is for the rapture and the images of the Antichrist and the tribulation. Things like earthquakes, things like famine, things like uh, wickedness and taking away from true faith, apostasy, uh, uh, false revelations that are going around deceiving the book of Christ. This is the sign of the end time. This is the sign that the rapture will happen any moment. Amen. And that is the message that we preach here week in and week out, trying to get everyone uh, to the point where they realize that the darkness has surrounded the world and, you know, the Lord himself, uh, he has clearly indicated through uh, his other prophets that he cannot take it anymore. The world is engulfed in sin and darkness and it's time for him to rescue his pure bride from this evil world. And so we are, as just as you heard the brother said, that we have to be in a state of readiness because we do not know the day or the hour, but we know that we are in that season. We know perfectly well that we are living in a time of grace where we are only here by grace. And so, as uh, Brother Autositus just said, that we are always supposed to be on the lookout, realizing that at any moment, the Lord can just come through those clouds to collect us. Hallelujah. So, um, Brother, um, I just want to, you to answer this quick question with regards to being rapture ready. I mean... As you said, I mean, we could call ourselves Christians, but not ready for the rapture. We could be saved, but we may not be ready for the rapture. But from your view, from what you've learned, what is required of us as Christians to be in a state of readiness for the rapture? What is it required for us to be rapture ready? Uh -huh. Okay, um, for the listeners, they the need to know that for you to become ready for the rapture or for you to be ready for heaven, first you need to become born again. That means you must accept the Lord Jesus in your life as your personal Savior, as your Lord, repent of your sins, place your faith and trust completely on Him for salvation. The Bible says there is no name that is given under heaven by which you must be saved except the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That means the Muslims, the Hindus, those are worshiping idols, it's time for them to repent, 
to accept the Lord Jesus Christ into their lives as the Lord and prepare for them. That is the most important thing, the first thing for people to become rapture ready. Uh, some other points that the Lord has shown me that we need, that are required of us for us to be rapture ready. We need to become uh, prayerful individuals. Prayer is the only thing that can align us with the will of God. So we don't pray, there's no how we can know the will of God. There's no how we can know the, the next step that uh, the Lord wants us to do. A lot of uh, messages and revelations that I received from the Lord, from the revelations, they happen when I'm in prayer. The Holy Spirit tells me, okay, I want to show you this, I want to show you this thing. Do this and this. If I don't get into prayer, there's no how I can hear what is say. So prayer aligns us with the will of God. And Jesus said we have to pray with us in every day prayer, in the night prayer, in the morning prayer, everywhere prayer. And in this prayer, there need to be daily repentance because we can sin without knowing. We can sin against other people and we don't even realize it. That is why it's very important that we come before the Lord on moments notice or daily. And we say, God, what is it that I have done against you today? What is it that I have uh, said to somebody that has offended someone I didn't even know? And you begin to ask him to forgive you, to cleanse you, the Holy Spirit to convict you, to expose, to show sin in your life, and you repent of it. And also, we need to be uh, studying the Word of God, living the Word of God. The Bible says the hearers of the Lord are not blessed, but the doers. So we are supposed to read, internalize, study, and then we live the Word. Uh, simply, uh, holiness simply is obeying the will of God is obeying the word of God. And the will of God is found in the word of God. So God is expecting us as the bride of Christ in this time and this evening. We are supposed to be reading this word. We are supposed to be meditating upon it day and night. And we are supposed to be living the word. So that means when the word says life is a sin, we must stop it. When the word of God says we must pray, we must pray. When the word of God tells us to do something, we do it. When it tells us not to do something, we don't do it. And, uh, and then also, this is what is called total surrender. Or we have to give ourselves completely unto Jesus. We say, Lord, not your will be done in my life, but your will be done in my life. Sometimes there's some certain things that I want to do, but I can't do because it's not the will of God. And I'm not living for myself, but I'm living for the will of God. The book of Romans chapter 12 talks about after we renew our mind, present our body, sons of God, for living sacrifice, then we can know the good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. God wants us to live in His will. He wants us to live in his perfect will. Matthew chapter 7 talks about uh, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my Father, but those who do the will of my Father in heaven. And then also the last two points, uh, holiness, we need to be living holy and godly lives. That means our lives must reflect uh, Christ. Everything we do, that means there needs to be holiness in our ways, what we say, this should be seasoned with salt and cut grace to the hearers. Uh, what we watch must be good at all times. Uh, how we dress as Christian women, we must cover their bodies. Then they are not supposed to be exposing their bodies and cursing people there to laugh at them. Um, the Lord told me something when I went to heaven that he wants women, especially the Christian women, the women of God, the prophetesses, pastors, was to dress in a way that represents him, to cover their bodies. Time for exposing images and all those mini scares, that time is expired. Those are the things of the past. That is for a look on church. The Lord expects us to be living in a holy way. And then also, our actions also, our conduct, very important. Our behavior, our attitude, our motives. Our motives must be right. Whatever we do for the Lord, whether it be evangelism, whether it be soul winning, whether it be anything we do, our motives must be right. When we give to the poor, when we give, are we doing it because of us or we are doing it for the Lord? So, even those things are very, very important. And then also, they need to be uh, intimate with the Holy Spirit. After I become born again, I must speak the baptism of the Holy Spirit that comes with the ignorance of speaking in tongues. And after that, I need to have a daily feelings of the Holy Spirit. I study His name, I pray, I ask God to fill me continually with the Holy Spirit to give me a full oil lamp. Remember the wise versions of Matthew 17 to 5 that they were allowed to enter into the banquet because they were given a full oil lamp. That signifies the presence, the anointing, the infusion of the Holy Spirit. So these are the things that we need in order for us to be a rapture ready. And the last thing, uh, we need to know that there's a difference between the holiness that God requires us to make it heaven 
and law or bondage or legalism. I hear a lot of people and uh, uh, some revelations, people are saying the Lord told them that people are not supposed to be eating pork, people are not supposed to be celebrating Christmas, people are women are not supposed to be put on pants, wedding rings, and make up, kissing, all those kind of things. And the Lord told me that these things, they don't come from Him. The Lord has not called us for legalism, but He has called us for holiness. For holiness. So there's a great difference between legalism and then holiness. God wants us to cover our bodies, to dress in a way that glorifies Him. But He has not told any of us to preach against makeup, wedding rings, and perfume, all those kind of things. These things, they will never get us to heaven, even if we leave them. So these things are not important at all. The main thing is our heart, the state of our heart, and then how we represent Him, how we talk, how we dress, and that. Yes, that's what I can say about being a child. Amen, amen. And, uh, you know, that is a subject that I, I actually spoke about on my last program um, because I realized that it is an issue, not, well, <laughs> I believe all over the world because it's uh, one of the big plans of the enemy in these last times to, to confuse us and to segregate us, to separate the church and to cause confusion within the church and cause people to fall. So I dealt with that subject last week, and I'm so glad that you came again this week and touched on it a, a little bit. Uh, we thank God for that. And so we are basically come to the end of our interview. Um, but uh, I'll just give you a minute or two, Brother Otisitsi, uh, if you'd like to, if you have any last words for our listeners, anything that you uh, have been placed on your heart just to tell to the listeners of the Watchman Radio program. I'll just give you a minute or two to do that. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Um, um, what I, the Lord told me to have, he gave me to the messages which are important, and he told me to go around the world to preach this message. That is, the rapture is very imminent, and also there is a heaven that is prepared for us, the pure in heart, the faithful and the obedient ones, and then also there is a hell, that when we need heaven, we can remove hell. So let us, at uh, this moment, let us set our goals, our objectives, to make it the kingdom of God. The ocean is very, very important. Us making it on the rapture, us making it on heaven. That is the first, uh, what can I say, the most important thing to him about our lives. Yes, God will give us the houses, God will give us marriages, God will give us money and bless us with it. It's the thing. But we are not supposed to take our eyes from making it on the kingdom of God and we put and fix it on the things here on the earth. Colossians chapter 3 says we must put our affection, our minds, our days on the things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of, of the Father. So as a Christian, if you are looking in there and you are a Christian, this is the high time that you are supposed to now put your eyes completely on Jesus and let him take care of the small little things of the earth things that you need. Don't let your problems be of the earth. Take your eyes from heaven, from the rapture, and then you focus on these things, and then you become left behind. The rapture is very imminent, and the Lord wants us to make it from the rapture. So let us do everything possible for us to make it there. Let us not disappoint the Lord. These are my last words. Amen. And sound and true words to all of you listening out there. Uh, Brother Orthosis, I thank you very much again for sparing the time. I know that you're a very busy man. Uh, your ministry is taking you to great lengths and is keeping you very busy. But you have availed yourself to talk to us today. And I do th appreciate the sacrifice that you have made. And I thank you very much for appearing on the Watchman Radio program. Amen. I'm indeed humble and blessed to be part of this ministry sharing with you. Amen. Amen. So I say goodbye for now and thank you again very much. You are listening to the Watchman. Hallelujah. A powerful testimony by Brother Otosese out of Botswana, Africa. A man that has visited heaven uh, on a number of occasions. I've seen many things as he shared just a few of them with us on this program. I do
do apologize. I realized that the the connection was not a hundred percent. But the good thing is that we can access this program from YouTube anytime from tomorrow and we'll be able to listen it again if we think that we have missed something or have not heard something clearly we can go back and listen to it again but I thank him for all the information that he has given to us and uh, I, it should be a big encouragement to all of you especially you as Christians that you will be encouraged to know what is ahead to get or to hear a glimpse of what to expect when we get to heaven and it should also be an encouragement to you out there who are not saved an encouragement for you to get it right because if you don't make it to that place that we have described today God forbid you will be going to a place that is totally opposite to heaven a place that we call or is called hell where there is fire brimstone all manner of pains and hurtings you will have no peace you sorry you'll have no rest from all of these pains for all eternity you will be in torment you will be tortured for all eternity but if you make it to heaven you will live in bliss for all eternity you'll be walking on streets of gold you'll be able to transport yourself from one place to the next at the speed of thought everything will be light will be able to fly as you heard the man said and all the supernatural things that we are limited to do in this body here on earth we will be able to do them up there as he said we will also be reunited with all, all of our lost ones especially children if we have had abortions as sinners if we, we have repented and we have gotten it right now when we get to heaven we will be reunited with them hallelujah something to look forward to very important information that we have received from brother Otis said say today and I hope that all of you have been very uh, were very blessed uh, have been encouraged to reach out more even more for the Lord to stay in a state of readiness the information he gave with regards to being rapture ready I we went over that just uh, last uh, in the last program on Tuesday gone where the main thing is that we be in the perfect will of God as the scripture confirms when we are in the perfect will of God in every area of our lives we will be ready when the Lord comes to be raptured to go to the wedding supper so that's uh, the main criteria there not only just to be saved but to be in the will of God hallelujah so as time is running down I want to as usual reach out to you out there who are not saved that you accept the Lord Jesus Christ as Savior today before it is too late 
we've just heard and uh, he has just confirmed what we've been saying over and over and over again on this radio station on this program that the rapture is imminent it can happen at any moment so all our, of our plans right now should be directed to that event all of our personal plans future plans whatever plans we may have should be cancelled and we should be focusing on being ready for the rapture because time is that short very short much shorter than most of us may think and don't be one of those people saying oh saying yes oh yes i know the rapture is imminent i know it can happen at any time but yet still you're still going on with your normal life in full in full pursuit of your personal goals in full pursuit of the things of the world there are a lot of you out there like that but I'm telling you today that it should not be so and if it is so with you you are going to be in for a big surprise when the rapture do happens you're going to be in for a big surprise so be warned be warned that your full attention and focus and pursuit should be for God at this very moment in this very time hallelujah so as I said those of you out there who are not saved today is a day of salvation for you if you're listening and you want to give your heart to God, if you're sincere about turning from your evil and wicked ways, this is the moment you have been waiting for and have been looking for. What I want to do with you is to lead you into a sinner's prayer. And at the end, once you believe that you have received what you have asked for, you will receive that free gift of salvation that is freely offered to you right now. So, wherever you are, I just want to repeat this prayer. I want you to lift up your hearts towards heaven and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are the Son of the true and living God. I also know that you came to earth and died for my sins. You said in your word that if I confess my sins, that you will forgive me of them. So with a sincere desire to serve you, I ask you please to come into my heart. Forgive me of all of my sins. Cleanse me from all my unrighteousness. Make me whole and write my name in the book of life today. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Thank you for answering my prayer. And I thank you for saving me. Hallelujah. And if you have said that prayer with a sincere heart, congratulations and welcome into the family of Christ. Hallelujah. Hold on tight to what you have just received. And never let it go. Stay faithful and true. Read the word of God. Dedicate a lot of time, most of your time, to reading and studying and meditating on the word of God. And also to pray without ceasing. 
these two very important things I would encourage you to do if you have to sacrifice other things sacrifice your internet time sacrifice your TV time whatever t worldly thing that you can give up to spend that time with Jesus I would encourage you very strongly to do it to maintain and to build yourself up in the Lord hallelujah so I thank you for making that bold step the watchman the watchman the watchman the watchman the watchman the watchman yes we have come to the end of the program once more and I thank you for tuning in today we had a good time with Brother Otto's sister with the information that he had and shared with us information about our future home if you are headed there and you know this information excites me and as I'm sure it excites you to know uh, or to get a view I hear a view of what to expect on that occasion. Hallelujah. So again, we have come to the end of the program. And I thank you for tuning in. And I want to extend an invitation to all of you out there who may be in London or planning a trip to come to London at some time. If you want to visit a church that uh, will preach the unadulterated word of God, to visit us at Shiloh Revival Tamanaco. And you can find us at Parkview School on West Green Road in London. The postcode there is N153QR. And you can find us there every Sunday from 12 p.m. to 3 p.m. If you'd like to contact me for any further information, you can find me on Facebook by, by searching for Minister Curtis Roach. That's C-U-R-T-I-S-R-O-A-C-H. And uh, you can leave me a message there. Or alternatively, you can search for uh, the page for this program, which is under the name of the Watchman Radio Program. Leave me a message and I'll be able to respond to you. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel where I post all of these programs under my name, Curtis Roach. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Roach underscore Curtis. Yes, so yeah. again, I uh, just want to remind you that you can join me every Tuesday from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. GMT and uh, every Friday from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. GMT for another exciting program of the Watchman Radio program. Yes, hallelujah. So again, thank you. I am your host, Minister Curtis Roach. I bid you Godspeed. Jesus come.